Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video. This group is for helping students of BS, MS, MPhil, and PhD in English Linguistics, Applied Linguistics TEFL, TESOL, TOEFL and ILTS students. Dr. Khalid Malik is the founder of Applied Linguistics Groups YouTube.com forward slash at 1966 Pakistani. Dr. Khalid Malik has a PhD in Applied Linguistics to Seoul. He published more than 25 research papers. He taught a lot at foreign universities and admitted to a postdoctoral study project in Canada. Help others easily find Applied Linguistics Group by copying or downloading a QR code to join. Relationship between theory of language, language learning and language syllabuses. Theories of language and language learning. Introduction. Language is one attribute that sets humans apart from all other creatures. And binds humans together across all geographic barriers. A word can cause to sink into the deepest despair or lift us to inspired action. Language can be the tool for great achievement in any discipline. Good understanding of the capabilities and needs of the individual child and a sound knowledge and belief in the goals of Language Acts program are vital factors in successful individualization of instruction. The theories language learning of Piazza, Vygotsky, Chomsky, Skinner, Skemp, Coleridge, etc. debate the exact functions of language. Yet its role as a tool in conceptual thinking is undesirable. This paper tried to explore the significance of those theories in influencing language, and thereby its significance in English language learning in developing countries. Language is the vehicle of discretion, means the peculiar mode to transfer. Transmit the intended message to the receiver. Everyone as human beings make utilizes it. Language is a purely human and non-instinctive method of communicating ideas, emotions, and desire by means of systems of voluntary produced symbols. The importance of the role of language in the leaning process cannot be overestimated. Language plays a key role in unifying a vast and complex notion and in providing individuals with outlets for developing diverse skills and abilities. Language is one attribute that sets humans apart from all other creatures and binds humans together across all geographic barriers. A word can cause to sink into the deepest despair or lift us to inspired action. Language can be the tool for great achievement in any discipline. Good understanding of the capabilities and needs of the individual child and a sound knowledge and belief in the goals of Language Acts program are vital factors in successful individualization of instruction. Language is a means through which thought is organized, refined, and expressed. In short, Language helps in the formation of concepts, analysis of complex ideas, and to focus attention on ideas which would otherwise be difficult to comprehend. The theories of Piazza, Vygotsky, Chomsky, Skinner, Skemp, Coleridge, etc. debate the exact functions of language. Yet its role as a tool in conceptual thinking is undesirable. Chomsky's view of competence deals primarily with abstract grammatical knowledge. He held that linguistic theory is concerned primarily with an ideal speaker and listener in completely homogeneous speech community, which knows its language perfectly, and is unaffected by such grammatically irrelevant conditions as memory limitations, distractions, shifts of attention and interest and errors in applying his knowledge of the language in actual performance, Chomsky 1965. According to Chomsky, rudimentary form of language is stored in human brain. Language is a competency that is unique for man. We perceive language as the ability to comprehend and speak ideas. Even when two persons possess the same knowledge, observable difference is noted in their capacity to express the knowledge. Chomsky emphatically argues that the mind possess a distinguishable factor that could be termed as the language factor and it has well-defined structure and system. The value of language cannot be fulfilled merely by familiarizing with a few words or sentences. A question is often posed. Does language influenced thought or does through establish its authority over language? But Chomsky 
considers the two to be mutually complementary. When a structure is being taught, the purpose should be got constructed in the child's mind as an idea. This means, what is to be retained in the mind is not mere words or sentences but the ideas constructed. For Chomsky, the focus of linguistic theory was to characterize the abstract abilities speakers possess that enable them to produce grammatically correct sentences in a language. Chomsky considered language as a highly the theories of language learning and its relation with syllabuses. The syllabus is an essential factor in the achievement of communicative competence in second language teaching. Various proposals for syllabus design have been made, ranging from product to process syllabuses. Their theoretical basis and the practical constraints which influence them were discussed by different linguistics. The product syllabus is a formal statement of the end product, and has been criticized mainly because it cannot account for communicative competence in the syllabus design itself and because it may encourage a step-by-step -step teaching procedure. The process syllabus attempts to address learning procedures and is concerned with language learning experiences and the negotiation of meaning. This approach is also not without its critics. But practical factors such as administrative requirements, teacher capacity and learner differences constrain the syllabus design. It is concluded that a process syllabus which specifies the classroom activities in much more detail than has been the case so far, and which contains product elements to accommodate some of the constraints, is likely to realize the aim of communicative competence. Types of syllabi syllabus design is thought to be based essentially on a decision about the units of classroom activity, and the sequence in which they are to be performed, Robinson, 1998. Syllabi can be divided into two different types, product-oriented syllabi and process-oriented syllabi. Long and Crooks, 1992, Long and Robinson, 1998. Product-oriented syllabi focus on what learners will know as a result of instruction and they typically list a selection of graded items to be learned by the learners. However, the focus in process-oriented syllabi is on the pedagogic processes of how outcomes of teaching and learning can be achieved. Brown, 1995, lists seven basic syllabus types, structural, situational, topical, functional, notional, skills-based and task-based and these can be linked to specific teaching approaches and methods. 7p. Product-oriented syllabi Structural syllabi, Ellis 1993, p.199. Structural syllabi are one of the most common types of syllabi and still today we can see the contents pages of many course books set out according to grammatical items. The grammatical syllabus has been defined as one which consists of a list of grammatical items selected and graded in terms of simplicity and complexity, Noonan, 1988. The structures are generally presented one by one, usually, but not always, in contrasting pairs, for example, simple present versus simple past or singular nouns versus plural nouns, Long and Crooks, 1992. In his work Notional Syllabuses, Wilkins, 1976, as cited in Baylor Izzard, 2012, defines this kind of approach to syllabus design as synthetic. A synthetic language teaching strategy is one in which the different parts of language are taught separately and step by step so that acquisition is a process of gradual accumulation of the parts until the whole structure of the language has been built up. 2p. The above definition provided by Wilkins suggests that the grammatical syllabus presents structures, which are graded according to grammatical complexity, one by one and are supposedly internalized by learners before moving on to the next item. The structural syllabus, sometimes it is called the traditional syllabus, is based on a theory of language which assumes that the grammatical or structural aspects of language forms are the most basic or useful items in learning languages. This syllabus can be said to embrace a theory of learning which holds that functional ability arises from structural knowledge or ability. Structural syllabus is based on the assumption that language rules are learned in a linear fashion and learners should demonstrate complete mastery of one rule before moving on to the next, Noonan, 2001. Noonan, 1899, states in the process-oriented syllabuses, however, 
the focus shifts from the outcomes of instruction, i.e., the knowledge and skills to be gained by the learner, to the processes through which knowledge and skills might be gained, 40p. The procedural and task-based syllabuses are considered as examples of process-oriented syllabuses. Objectives of the structural syllabus according to that syllabus, grammatical concepts such as nouns, imperatives, plural, gerund are simply better defined than functional ones and also easily measured. For example, to make right or wrong decisions about the structural aspects of learners' language is easy in a grammar test. Ellis, 1993, 2003, maintains that formal grammar instruction works by developing explicit knowledge of grammatical features. According to Ellis, explicit knowledge gained through grammar instruction helps learners in three ways. First, it helps them monitor their utterances before and after they are produced. Secondly, it helps learners notice certain features in the input. Thirdly, Ellis, 2003, points out if learners know about a particular feature they are better equipped to detect the difference between what they themselves are saying and how the feature is used in the input they are exposed to p.149. Similarly, Cullen, 2008, states that without any grammar, the learner is forced to rely exclusively on lexis and the other prosodic and nonverbal features to communicate his forward slash her intended meaning. P.221 Cullen calls this as a liberating force of grammar. P222. Following is an example set by this article author on how grammar will help listeners to understand the difference in meaning between the following sentences. 1. John is studying medicine. 2. Omar studied medicine. 3. Sami has been studying medicine for five years. 4. Jane will study medicine. The tenses used in previously mentioned sentences helps us to know that Sami is the one who started to study medicine and is still studying it now, whereas Omar finished studying medicine and Jane is still planning to study medicine. Two terms, grading and sequencing, are related to structural Noonan, 1988, pinpoints that it could be argued that any proposal failing to offer criteria for grading and sequencing can hardly claim to be a syllabus at all. P47, Noonan adds that often the items in each list of grammar and lexicon are arranged in order showing which are to be taught in the first course, which in the second and so on. Noonan, 1988, also states that staging and sequencing are carried out according to criteria of 1. Simplicity, simple structures are taught first, 2. Regularity, generalizable and productive structures are taught first, 3. Frequency, most common structures are taught first. 4. Contrastive difficulty, structures not found in the L1 are emphasized, and 5. Social and pedagogical utility. P49, shortcomings of the structural syllabus. The structural syllabus has many shortcomings, one meaning of words are taught separately from context. They are taught in a list of isolated lexicon. 2. As grammar is taught in rules. There is no teaching of the way in which grammar is used in an utterance to express a social context. 3. Teaching grammar is overemphasized through drilling exercises. Situational syllabus Both situational syllabus and notional syllabus are types of semantic syllabus. Linguistic underpinning of this syllabus is that language is always used in context, never in isolation. Yolden, 1983, 35p. Your, 2000, defines a situational syllabus as a syllabus in which the contents are organized according to situations in which certain language is likely to be employed. P.178, according to Yolden, 1987, the situational model will comprise units indicating specific situations, such as at the post office, buying an airline ticket, or the job interview. The topical or thematic syllabus is similar but generally employs the procedure of grouping modules or lessons around a topic, something like barnacles clinging to the hull. P35, according to, Johnson, 2002, there are three types of situational syllabus differentiated by their informational content and linguistic content. One limbo, specific setting of the situation is of little or no importance. 
What is important is the particular language focus involved. Two concrete situations are enacted to specific settings and the language associated with it. Three mythical situations depend on a fictional cast of characters in a fictional place. PP.179180 The most familiar way of presenting a situation is as a dialogue, usually at the beginning of a lesson and the topics, settings, participants in situations can vary infinitely. Well-prepared situations can show how native speakers act and what they talk about and are concerned about. In situational language teaching, structures are always taught within sentences and vocabulary is chosen according to how well it enables sentences patterns to be taught. Frisbee, as cited in Holiday, 1994, states, Our early course will consist of a list of sentence patterns, statement patterns, question patterns, and request or command patterns, will include as many structural words as possible, and sufficient content words to provide us with material upon which to base our language practice. 54p one of the shortcomings of the situational syllabus is that the different situations created in situational syllabi determine the language structures to be learnt. Yolden, 1987, summarizes this limitation of situational syllabus. He states that while situational syllabuses represent a step toward greater emphasis on the semantic component of syllabus design, there is still something missing in their organization, in that the situation in which we find ourselves does not in and of itself necessarily determine all of what we want or need to say. Lexical Syllabus Design of Lexical Syllabus Willis, 1990, and Noonan, 1988, the cornerstone of this type of syllabus is vocabulary. Lexical syllabuses build up vocabulary areas based on a detailed analysis of high-frequency vocabulary and phrases of a selected corpus of language used in language communication. Thus, the syllabus usually contains lists of the most frequent words, their meanings, word collocations and patterns where the words can be used. Grammar, in lexical syllabuses is connected to the different patterns of words, expressions of notions and functions. But the organizing principle is lexical, and as such it can account for a far higher proportion of text and offer a more thorough coverage of the language of the target discourse situation than other syllabus types. Another benefit of a lexical syllabus is that it is clear, unambiguous in the sense that everybody can recognize what a word its phrases and patterns are. However, lexical syllabus may contain one full-page explanation of a word, its word families, its patterns, and its phrases and collocations. Most of the 700 most frequent words, which would seem a reasonable target for a 120-hour course, have at least three different meanings, making corpus of 2,100 items. Noonan, 1988, states that the length of the lexical syllabus textbook might sometimes be 350 pages. The notional syllabus One of the pioneers in writing about notional syllabus was Wilkins. Thus, most of the information of notional syllabus is based on his book The Notional Syllabus Revisited, 1981. Notions are meaning elements that may be expressed through nouns, pronouns, verbs, prepositions, conjunctions, adjectives or adverbs. Notions are general concepts such as time, space, cause and effect. Finocchiaro and Brumfit, 1983, cited in Brown, 2000. 91p. The notional syllabus was developed in direct response to the failings in both grammatical and situational syllabuses. The syllabus is organized in terms of content rather than the form of the language. The notional syllabus has as its focus the semantic content of the target language. Students must learn to express different types of meanings. Underpinning this syllabus is the idea that language is cyclic, rather than linear. Therefore, there was really no ordered approach to the grammar. It also recognized that a variety of forms are used to express the same meaning. Wilkins, 1981, pinpoints that notional syllabus helps learners to use language communicatively, leading to better learners' competence. Functional forward slash notional syllabus. Topic-based syllabus based on what? Book, 2006, and 
Richards and Rogers, 1994, state, This syllabus is the third type of semantic syllabi besides the lexical and situational syllabi. Often, this syllabus is built around certain topics and themes, such as travel, drugs, religious persuasion, advertising, modern architecture, sport and so on. The topic-based textbook units start with a variety of exercise that stimulates student interest in the theme and develop the student's ability to manipulate the language appropriate to the situation and use the language of the theme. The rest of the thematic unit include activities that elaborate the theme, such as key ideas, including cultural, cross-cultural and linguistic, listening comprehension, speaking, reading, writing, and vocabulary. Process-oriented syllabuses more recently, applied linguists and syllabus designers have become more concerned with the pedagogic processes of how teachers achieve their outcomes. These syllabuses include the following. Task-based syllabus task being anything the learners are given to do, or choose to do, in the language classroom to further the process of language learning. Williams and Burden, 1997. P.167. Some of task based syllabus proponents is Willis 1996. Skahan, 1996 A, defines a task as an activity in which I, meaning is primary, 2, there is some sort of relationship to the real world, 3, task completion has some priority, and 4. The assessment of task performance is in terms of task outcome. 38 P, according to Prabhu, 1992, a task is an activity which required learners to arrive at an outcome, from given information through some process of thought, and which allowed teachers to control and regulate the process. 2P, Long, 1985, defines a task as a piece of work undertaken for oneself or others, freely or for some reward. In other words, by task is meant the hundred and one things people do in everyday life, at work, at play, and in between. 89p, the task-based content consists of activities that the learners have to do for non-instructional purposes outside of the classrooms. The content of the situations is provided by the students themselves. Tasks require the student to apply cognitive processes or higher-order thinking skills, such as evaluation, selection, combination, modification, or supplementation to a combination of new and old information. The primary theory of learning underlying task-based instruction is Krashen's acquisition theory. Tasks can be selected according to the student's cognitive and linguistic readiness for particular tasks, and their need for the particular discourse. Shorter and simpler tasks should be undertaken before longer and more complex. The content-based syllabus Krashen's theory, cited in Brown, 1995,2000, focuses on the fact that for learning languages to happen, sufficient opportunity to engage in meaningful use of that language should be provided. The content-based syllabus is the teaching of content or information with little effort to teach the language itself separately from the content being taught. When teaching techniques are adjusted so that students comprehended the content material as it is presented in the new language, both content and language acquisition do occur. Cited in Jalil Zaid and Tama C.B., 2014, Stiller, 2002, states, in a content-based approach, the activities of the language class are specific to the subject matter being taught, and are geared to stimulate students to think and learn through the use of the target language. The theory of language assumed by content-based syllabus embraces the full range of communicative competence, including a structural component grammatical competence, sociolinguistic and discourse competence, especially in school settings, and strategic competence. Content-based syllabus does not clearly distinguish form and function in teaching language but makes the language available in the contents of its functions and meanings. Brown, 2000. Extensive reading of literature or other content material in a target language can also be seen as a type of content-based learning. There are many techniques used to present content-based syllabus. Jalil Zaid and Tama C.B., 2014, 226-228, listed the following techniques, cooperative learning, 
task-based learning, experimental learning, whole language approach, graphic organizers, project work, and web quests. The relational syllabus as reported in White, 1988, relational syllabus is based on items like notional relations such as cause-effect, or discourse relations, such as question-reply, or clause structure, P78. It could perhaps be included under the headings of semantic functional textual. A relational syllabus, like grammatical and notional forward slash functional syllabuses, would seem only to account for certain parts of the total linguistic system. The communicative syllabus it is a syllabus which specifies the semantic grammatical categories, for example, frequency, motion, and location, and the categories of communicative function that learners need to express. Brown. 1995, P95. The Council of Europe expanded and developed this into a syllabus that included descriptions of the objectives of foreign language courses for European adults, the situations in which they might typically need to use a foreign language, for example travel, business, the topics they might need to talk about, for example personal identification, education, shopping, the functions they needed language for for example describing something, requesting information, expressing agreement and disagreement, the notions. Made use of in communication, for example time, frequency, duration, as well as the vocabulary and grammar needed. In short, it is centered around communication, i.e. meaning, convention, appropriacy, interaction and structure. The audiolingual method audiolingualism is a linguistic or structure-based approach to language teaching. The starting point is a linguistic syllabus, which contains the key items of phonology, morphology, and syntax of the language arranged according to their order of presentation. In addition, a lexical syllabus of basic vocabulary items is usually specified in advance. Thus, the structural and the lexical syllabi can be taught using the ALM. Total Physical Response, Asher's Method the type of syllabus ASHA used can be inferred from an analysis of the exercise types employed in TPR classes. This analysis reveals the use of a sentence-based syllabus, with grammatical and lexical criteria being primary in selecting teaching items. Unlike methods that operate from a grammar-based or structural view of the core elements of language, total physical response requires initial attention to meaning rather than to the form of items. Grammar is thus taught inductively. Multi-intelligence-based language teaching also, there is no syllabus as such, with a prescribed or recommended, in respect to me-based language teaching. According to Wijaya, 2013, multiple intelligences theory offers teachers an opportunity to develop innovative teaching techniques. However, there is a basic developmental sequence that has been proposed as a type of syllabus design. Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video for helping students of BS, MS, MPhil, and PhD in English Linguistics, Applied Linguistics TEFL, TESOL, TOEFL and ILTS students. Dr. Khalid Malik is the founder of Applied Linguistics Group YouTube.com forward slash at 1966 Pakistani. Dr. Khalid Malik has a PhD in Applied Linguistics TESOL. He published more than 25 research papers. He taught a lot of foreign universities and admitted to a postdoctoral study project in Canada. Help others easily find Applied Linguistics Group by copying or downloading a QR code to join.